Hello everyone, this is Harold Goat here. And like a lot of you know, I am hiking the Pacific Crest Trail this year. And today I'll be making a video of my all the gear that I'll be bringing on my Pacific Crest Trail. It'll be my first ever gear video. And right behind me is the map of the Pacific Crest Trail. It's Washington, Oregon, and all of California. And this is on the back side of my bedroom door. Inside here is the resupply headquarters. Got all my resupply boxes. Now, there's only 15 boxes here, but I'll be doing around 28 to 30 resupplies, so the rest will be buying out there. Now I've already shipped one resupply box, my crampons and my ice axe, uh, over to Washington to a Trail Angels house. She's gonna come pick me up from the airport. I'm flying out July 8th, and I'll be landing there on the same day. And July 9th, I think I'll be starting the, the Pacific Crest Trail, so <laughs> I'll be uh, getting to Hearts Pass. Then from Hearts Pass, I'm going to go north, tag the monument, and then come back um, and start my southbound trip on the PCT. So, anyway, this is all my gear that I'll be taking. I'll be going through it today. Now, before I dive into it, uh, I just want to say that I am... By no means a lightweight backpacker. I, yeah, I like to have quite a few comfort items and I just simply haven't replaced some things uh, for lighter weight gear like my sleeping bag and my my, uh, my backpack and stuff just because I really really like it and it's nice and comfortable. Don't really want to replace it yet. I'm slowly dropping my pack weight uh, from 2014 when I did the Colorado Trail and the John Muir Trail. I've already lost, uh, my, my base weight in 2014 was 56 pounds, <laughs> and yeah, 56 pounds base weight, so, uh, and then th this time it's around 32 pounds, which is a, which I'm really happy about, I've honest, I've lost close to 22 pounds on my backpack weight, and, which is pretty incredible. Anyway, here's my gear, this is a painting that a friend of mine did for me. Uh, after my Colorado Trail trip, this is Coney Summit, the highest point in the Colorado Trail. Uh, a friend of mine did that for me. Really happy the way it turned out. Incredible artist. Anyway, let's dive into it. This is all my gear. Alright, so I'm just going to dive right into it. Uh, this is the backpack that I'll be using. It's the Osprey, Osprey Ether 70. Same backpack that I used in 2014 for the CT and the John Muir Trail. And got the CT badge right on there. I really, really like this pack. Uh, very comfortable. And like I said, I'm not a lightweight backpacker. And this holds my weight really well. And there's lumbar supports, big wide hip belts. Um, that transfer the weight down to the hip belts really well. Uh, with this frame. Uh, shoulder straps, nice and wide cushioned. The center piece here is nice and vented, uh, mesh, yeah, mesh vented uh, for your for the sweaty back. And, yeah, I really, really like this pack. Absolutely bomb proof, and I could have easily got a new one uh, for this trip to save a couple of pounds. Because this thing is four or five, like four to five pounds, uh, just the backpack alone. So, <laughs> but I really like it, and it just holds the weight so well, it's so comfortable. No problem carrying it. This is, this is a little pouch that goes on top of it. I keep all my miscellaneous stuff in here, and my my solar panel kind of gets wrapped around the top here as well. And this thing's got many uses too. Uh, if you're about to do a summit, like I did in Colorado, a couple of them. Uh, Mount, Mount Massif, Mount Whitney, no sorry, Mount Albert, Mount Massif, and St. Louis Peak. I leave the big pack down there. Throw this thing around my my waist. A little bit of food and water in here, a first aid kit or something like that, and yeah, awesome little day pack, little summit pack, and that's what I use it for, it works great. Anyway, that's my backpack. Next would be my sleeping pad, that's the that's a Thermarest NeoAir Max, and I know that they're uh, Thermarest makes the, the yellow ones that have the corners tapered off for a little bit of extra weight savings. But I really don't care about carrying like that little. Or, uh, yeah, I'm just not that big on uh, saving weight, so 
And I really like the extra real estate on this one too for my elbows and my legs. I do toss and turn quite a bit uh, sleeping and um, I really like this pad. Uh, nice and, and it's not very heavy at all compared to the one I was wearing or carrying in 2014. So. And this time I'll be carrying a stuff sack for it, like an air pump stuff sack. Uh, just hook this piece up to there and fill it up, the water, or fill it up there. Blow the air inside here via the nozzle. Now the reason I'm doing that and not just blowing the air inside with my mouth because I don't want to get the moisture uh, from my mouth inside the pad because it has nowhere to go. It'll always stay in there day after day after day. And I've seen a couple of YouTube videos where uh, those yellow, really light ones, the ultra light pads, uh, people do blow them, blow them up just with their mouth and. Uh, I was seeing this one video and they are holding it up to the sun. The inside was completely black from all the mold and mildew and, uh, growing inside of it. And with every time that you're filling it up again, uh, you're just adding more and more moisture to it, uh, adding more to the problem. So I've chosen to uh, keep my moisture out of there like, for my breath and just use this, use this stuff sack. I have no problem carrying it an extra stuff sack just to, um, oh, and every time you let the air out, uh, say you're sleeping on it and you just turn the knob and let the air out, all that mildew and mold and like all that air is getting blown out from your pad into your tent maybe, uh, so that it just can't be healthy. Um, so that's my, that's my reasoning. Anyway, I have a a thermorest little pillow. Uh, yes, I carry a pillow, and I really like this thing as well. And I don't like air pillows. They have, they don't have enough give. You know, like you can't really squeeze them up, ball them up, and get really comfortable with them. Uh, not as, not as much as these anyway. My sleeping bag, as what I'll be looking at next, is the Aquilia negative seven degree sleeping bag. Now negative seven degrees Celsius. It is 20 degrees Fahrenheit, I think for all my American my American friends. And this is from uh, Mech Mountain Equipment Co-op, just an out outdoor store here in Canada. Uh, awesome, outdoor oh, awesome outdoor store. And this is the bag. Really nice bag. I've had well over 150 sleeps in here. Comfortable sleeps. It's a 750 or 700 fill down bag. And Really, really comfortable. Absolutely love it. And again, I could have probably shaved some weight by getting a different bag because this one isn't the smallest or the uh, lightest. Um, but I chose not to only because I do like it so much. It's so comfortable. So, anyway, that's that. I'm going to grab some more gear. Alright, so next I'll be talking about my, my tent. It's the Big Agnes Fly Creek High Volume UL2 two-person tent. And I really like it. It's a very popular tent out on the Pacific Crest Trail. And uh, it's for a reason. It's a durable, lightweight, and awesome tent. Quite a bit of room inside as well. And I chose the two-person only because I do have a big backpack and more gear than your average person. And I like to have my gear inside the tent a lot too. So really, really nice tent. I'm sure I'll be very happy with it. Uh, next is my uh, Thermarest Z seat. Awesome piece of kit. It's been raining all day or something like that, and you have nowhere to dry to sit. Or the ground's all wet. Throw this on a wet log. Um, have a nice, comfortable little seat, no matter where you are. Super lightweight and very comfortable. Incredibly uh, cushioned for as thin as it is comes on all my trips with me, every single trip that I get go on, so. Anyway, next will be my cooking system. So I'm trying to get into my cooking system here. Uh, I just like to say that I do, I do do a lot of cooking out on the trail. I have no problem stopping for lunch, taking an hour for lunch, and cooking myself a nice, nice meal, a nice hot meal. And uh, especially at the end of the day too, you know, you've been climbing all day, hiking like crazy and you're tired and I love taking the time to make myself a nice hot meal um, 
it's quite rewarding uh, when, when you can eat well out there too. So, and I just love cooking in general. So, anyway, let's dive into it. This is my one and a half liter uh, jet jet boil flux ring. That's what they call it here. This is the flux ring. I guess it just disperses the heat better or whatever. Might yeah. And this is a little plate slash cutting board slash flux ring protector. And what I use this thing for is uh, usually my cutting board. I uh, cut up all my onions, jalapenos, tomatoes, whatever I might have out there, sweet peppers, uh, avocados, uh, anything like that. I usually never eat out of here. Uh, it's just my cutting board. I'll just dump them in there and, and also uh, protects the uh, flux ring. A little bit too. So, and this is the lid for it. Um, just throw that on when you're doing some simmering or something like that. And this is my stainless steel cup. <clears throat> now, I know I could have gone with the titanium one or an aluminum cup, but I've had this one for quite some time, and uh, titanium just doesn't disperse the heat um, as much as titanium or stainless steel, or sorry, stainless, uh, aluminum or stainless steel. Um, yeah, I just really like this thing a lot, and it will come with me, so. And if I find that I don't use it a whole lot, uh, which I'm sure I think I will, because I'm going to eat all my breakfasts in here, all my oatmeal and stuff like that's going to be in this one, so. And all my big meals in there. And, I don't know if you've seen, I'm sure a lot of you have seen my, my other videos, and uh, the, the amount of food that I eat, I just in general, I eat a lot of food, and many many of the evenings when I'm making a big meal cooking myself a big hot supper uh, this thing is completely full one and a half liters of food and I have no problem finishing that at all so yeah, I do eat a lot especially out on the trail when your hun hiker hunger starts kicking in oh dear yeah, I, I eat like a beast so one and a half liters of really good food some soup or whatever it might be no not too much at all and it's the perfect size for me too uh, one and a half liters, so and in every single resupply, uh, my 15 resupplies, I have a little, little scrubby. I uh, keep my pots and my pot and pan, uh, my pot and cup really clean. I have a Snow Peak spork, uh, titanium spork. Love that thing. Uh, and one big lighter. Fuel and my, my Primus original uh, burner. Now, yes, this is definitely not a lightweight burner. Um, it's a little bit on the heavy side, even. I'm not sure exactly how heavy it is, but the reason I chose this one is because it has a, a significantly larger flame surface area, like three, three and a half inches or whatever, with the flames that will shoot out the sides and, and it's got a lot of small little holes everywhere too, uh, it puts a really nice heat onto the bottom of my pot. Now, I was using the jet boil, uh, the jet boil burner in 2014 and I just found that with the jet boil burner, because it has such a small little burner in the center, because it is a lightweight burner, um, it just it more or less just does the inside like heats the inside up, whereas this one goes nice, a significantly larger, and I have a, a heck of a lot better time uh, simmering my meals too with this thing. I can control the heat very very well. And screw that onto there. Use the lighter. Start it up, and yeah, off you go. And yeah, that's my that's my cook system. Uh, I mean, it's nothing special. It's quite basic. All right, so next up is my uh, water filter and my water carrying system. Uh, my water filter is the Sawyer Original, uh, very popular on the trail, and this will be my uh, syringe to back flush my filter, get all the dirty out of it. And next is uh, for those questionable water sources, or you're, you're near cows or something like that, and you just don't really trust just filtering your water. Um, I also have the pristine water purification system uh, droplets here. It's 
not a whole lot in there, but uh, whenever I do need it for those really um, questionable water sources, sketchy water sources. So, and when I start the trail, I'll be carrying my HydroPack three liter water bladder. I really like this bladder, and the reason I carry a water bladder is because I sweat a lot, and therefore I drink a lot of water too, and I like to keep hydrated. And even at work, I drink a lot of water, just in general. And if I, if I just have, say, two smart water water bottles in my backpack, uh, which is fine, a lot, a lot of people do that. I, they don't carry a high, um, water bladder, and they'll just have the water in here, and maybe their filter on top of here, and just drink out of it like that. And that's, that's fine and dandy, no problem with that. But with me, I find that if my water bottles are in the back, in the side pockets of my um, backpack, I can't access them while I'm walking, so I have to stop, take my pack off, drink water, and keep going. And with that, and I've tried that, I find that I just don't keep hydrated enough, uh, or as well as when I have my, my water bladder with me. It's easy accessible water, and yeah, I really, really like having a water bladder. And I, I used to have the Osprey water bladder. Um, so this one's significantly lighter than that one, and it's very uh, flimsy too, so you can kind of just throw it in your pack and uh, it'll mold to whatever, uh, it, to your pack too. So. Uh, next is my two, uh, two, two liter Evernew water bags, really tough bags, um, a lot tougher than the ones that come with the Sawyer original, um, and it fits right on there as well. Uh, squeeze a filter right out of there too so in the beginning of the trail I'll probably be carrying one one uh, smart water bottle and my hydro pack and kind of and just filter my water through here into the bag and uh, carry about two three liters of water at most maybe four liters if I do need uh, some sections but and then for those really big sections where it's 35 miles or so without water I'll be, I'll be bringing both of these and maybe another one of these. Uh, so that'll be giving me the capacity to carry three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine liters of water if I decide to buy another smart water bottle. So, that, that's my water system and I'm a water carrying, carrying system. And I think that'll do, that'll do pretty good for me. So, next up, I'll be talking about my. My electronics, uh, my apps, and my maps. Uh, first thing is my camera bag. In this camera bag, I'll be putting my Sony A6000, the camera that I'm recording this video with right now. And with that camera, I also have two batteries. So that's three batteries in total. One that's in the camera, and I have two here. And that'll go right into this pocket. And on the side pocket here, I have a small little uh, space for this. Sony action camera. It's the newest and greatest Sony action camera. The Sony FDR X3000 4K action camera with optical stabilization. Absolutely love it. And it also has the waterproof case for it. Just want to do some video in the rain or under underwater. And with that camera, I have five batteries that I'll be carrying. Um, I'll be using that camera the most. Uh, for my day-to-day -day videos, and kind of like my vlogging video, or my camera, and so I'll be carrying five five batteries with that, uh, two, three batteries for the A6000, and I have a 20,000 milliamp battery pack here that I hopefully charge every single time, fully charge when I'm in town, and when I'm out of town and I've been using it, uh, I have the Anchor 21 watt solar panel. Really love this thing. Uh, it's been doing, it's been doing a great job, and definitely keeps up with the uh, the power that I do need out there. So really love this thing, and so hopefully it works good for me out on the trail for long distance too. So and uh, with that, because I like to have a long cord from my solar panel to my battery bank. Uh, my battery pack will be always be inside my backpack, and so. From my solar panel to this thing, I'll need a bit, little bit of a longer cord. Um, but when I'm in town, I just have a small little cord here. It's maybe 
maybe that long uh, for for charging the cameras or char charging this thing uh, directly from the wall with my dual USB port wall charger, small little wall charger, also uh, from Oki, awesome little thing, super lightweight, and, and uh, next is, uh, I guess, next is my phone, uh, LG G4, um, just a, uh, nothing special, and I have an otterproof, uh, otter box around the tube, a little bit of a protective case for it, uh, when I'm out in the mountains, and, that. This is my lens cap for the A6000, and this is the Gorillapod, uh, Joby Gorillapod. I uh, really like this thing, and this is the first time that I'll be bringing uh, a tripod on me on my trail, and hopefully I use it a lot, but if I don't, I'll, I'll just send it home, uh, but I really do hope I do, I hope I'll use it a lot. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens. So with my phone, uh, I also have, yeah, with my phone I also have a lot of music, podcasts, and stuff like that I'll be listening to on my headphones, some Samsung headphones, and uh, use my headlamp, a Princeton Tech Viz headlamp, one of my first, pe first pieces of gear that I ever bought uh, when I first started backpacking back in 2013, and well, it was basically 2014 already, but and yeah i love this thing absolutely love it, it goes everywhere with me use it a lot and 160 lumens super bright middle light there also has the soft white light and then uh, red red light as well awesome awesome light um and oh and to go with my cameras uh in this camera my Sony action camera i have a 64 gig card i have a 64 gig card in the a6000 that i'm recording this with right now and I have two 64 gig cards in here as well, plus six 128 gig cards. Uh, really nice, uh, high quality cards. And so, especially with these new cameras nowadays, um, they take such high quality video. And to fill up 128 gigs is nothing at all. It's like four or five hours of video, right? So, yeah, so I've got quite a bit of extra uh, cards there. And here's my, my maps, my compass, my Pacific Crest Trail data book, and on my phone I have a Half Miles PCT app and Gut Hooks PCT app. Uh, I'll be using Gut Hooks PCT app mostly uh, just because it has a southbound option and I'll be going southbound. So and I really like that app too. Gut Hooks PCT app is awesome. Very, very informative, lots of information on there, and easy to use, uh, very straightforward, awesome, awesome app. And for any southbounder, I'm pretty sure every southbounder does use it, but uh, yeah, awesome, awesome app. So that's my electronics, maps and apps. Um, these are just half miles maps that I got printed out, and it's just a simple little um, Silva uh, compass in case my my phone dies on me, or it breaks on me, or the apps don't work, or for some some reason just doesn't uh, doesn't let me use the apps, or it doesn't work. Then I have a compass and maps, which is very helpful uh, for backup, obviously. And for the Pacific Crest Trail or data book, reason I'm bringing this is just for extra information, uh, something that I can pull, just pull, like pull out of my pocket. Um, I'll unfortunately be reading it backwards, but. Uh, in case, yeah, again, just my phone dies or, or I don't want to pull it out because it's raining or something like that. I, and in, in, in my videos, um, I'll be making a detailed video of basically every single day or every other day. I'm not sure how I'm going to put the videos out, but I'll be recording a lot of video about the entire trail, my adventure out on the trail. And being, that being said, um, I'll be talking a lot about the areas that I'm in. And this will give me a lot of the information, uh, kind of just mile markers and uh, stuff like that too. So anyway, if, and if I don't refer to this uh, much, like, like I think I will, um, obviously I'll just send that back home too, or leave it in a uh, in a hiker box or something like that. So 
Alright, uh, next is my, um, this is some miscellaneous stuff here, um, push this off to the side. So next up will be my Comperdell Highlander cork handled trekking poles. Uh, these are the same ones that I was using in 2014 on the CT and the JMT. I really do like these, uh, they're not the lightest, they're not the lightest ones, but uh, they're cheap, they're only $79, and they're tough as nails. Um, really, really strong. No, no complaints about them at all. And these will be coming with me on, on the PCT this year as well. Uh, I don't mind them at all. I really like the cork handles on them too. Um, nice and comfortable. So next year I have some paracord. I have about 40 feet of paracord, reflective paracord. And I really like bringing some cord with. You have just many, many, many uses for cord. Uh, hanging up your food to uh, just helping with water crossings maybe or just anything at all. Some repairs or whatever it might be. I, I find uses for them all the time. And anyway, next here I have my just miscellaneous stuff uh, plus first aid kit uh, kind of mixed in here. And Kind of go through my first aid kit here first, I guess. Uh, whatever might be considered as first aid stuff. And anyway, a uh, little small roll of duct tape, uh, tightly wrapped up duct tape. And inside the end here, I have a pair of tweezers, uh, small little tweezers in case you get some blist or um, splinters or something like that. Especially in the desert where everybody or everything wants to poke you. I have two small little band-aids and two, two, uh, two ever so slightly larger band-aids. These two for like knees or elbows or something like that. And this is some second skin by Dr. Scholl's. Um, tape up your feet with. Now I know you can use duct tape and stuff like that too. And that works pretty well. But this is some uh, medical grade adhesive on here, really, really sticky and it helps uh, prevent blisters when you have a hot spot on your foot or something like that. Um, yeah, this, this helps a lot. I really do like this stuff. I, I always have some with me on my backpacking trips in case I get a hot spot or something like that. Uh, some wound closure strips, just a couple. And some painkillers, ibuprofen, Advil, and uh, some pills in case you get sick out there, uh, headaches and whatever. And uh, next is my like a little little container of a uh, little travel uh, container of polysporin uh, in case you get like really scuffed up elbows or knees or something like that. In case you wiped out. Next is kind of like just my miscellaneous stuff here. I carry an extra smart water bottle cap. I uh, never know when, when a cap's going to just slide in between two rocks or something like that and you can't get at it or wash down the river. So very, very important uh, piece of gear that you don't really think about. But And uh, my mouthpiece for my water bladder. In 2014, uh, a couple of rodents had completely eaten away my mouthpiece. Uh, to the point where I couldn't even use my water, my, my, uh, my mouthpiece for a while. So uh, I'm bringing an extra one this time in case it happens again. I have two Bix here. I'll probably s swap them out with uh, two mini Bix. I have my Thermarest sleeping pad uh, repair kit, instant field repair kit. Definitely bring that with me. A small little pair of stainless steel. Uh, fingernail clippers, just a small little pair, have no problem carrying that. Two small safety pins, 100 uses for those. Uh, Burt's Bees lip balm. Uh, I would, I think I might replace this with something that has like a UPF or like SPF or like some uh, sun protection on it because when you're hiking in the snow and stuff like that and it's really sunny, your lips really start uh, getting sunburned. So. And here I have my Leatherman Juice CS4. I really like this thing. I also carried this with me on the 
um, a CT and my John Muir Trail Trip in 2014. Absolutely love it. Uh, sharp little knife on it. Use this knife for everything. And uh, it's got a scissor on it uh, that I cut the I cut the second skin up with. Um, you know to make my make my pieces whatever for the back of the foot, for underneath the toes, for the ball of the foot, for anything at all. Um, yeah, and the scissors have a million uses for them as well. Small little saw, uh, awesome pliers, tough, tough pliers, and yeah, so that's the only knife and kind of tool thing I'm bringing. So, and I really like this thing, I have no problem bringing it, many uses uh, for it. Use it on a daily, honestly. And uh, when I'm, I have two badges here, whenever I have some time out on the trail, when I'm lazy, uh, I'm going to sew these onto my pack. There's the Canadian flag and my Algonquin Park moose sign badge. And so, yeah, those two will be throwing them on my backpack whenever I'm lazy on a, on a boring afternoon one day. So that's kind of just some random stuff here. Alright, so next I'm going to be talking about my clothes. Uh, the clothes I'll be wearing and carrying on the Pacific Crest Trail. And because I've never been to Washington, and I don't really know what it's going to be like when I first start out there, like the weather and how much it's going to snow, uh, well, probably shouldn't snow, but um, how much it's going to rain and how much snow there's still on the ground uh, while, I'm, uh, while I'm starting my through hike. And anyway, so I'm not sure. I'll probably have a little bit of extra clothes here and probably some things that a lot of you don't bring, but... Uh, if I don't use it, I'm gonna send it home. But I mean, this is what I'm gonna start out with right here. So, anyway, let's dive into it. I'm gonna start out with my gloves. Uh, just some thin hiking gloves from Mountain Equipment Co-op. Uh, yeah, uh, in 2014 I didn't have any, and uh, many, many times I really wanted a pair. And, uh, so this time I am bringing a pair. Just for those early mornings, it's really crisp early mornings where the wind is really taking the, uh, the heat out of your hands and so anyway uh, um, let's jump over to my pants here now these are the Columbia Omni Shade uh, sun protection pants and yeah they're really nice and comfortable very lightweight uh, they turn into shorts you got the zipper in the mid mid section there and a really really nice pair of pants really like them and for those really hot summer days where the sun is just unbearable, I'll probably end up wearing these just for the uh, sun protection. And so same with this shirt. Uh, it's the Arcteryx Skyline shirt. And this material is just really, really, really comfortable. And it's not too hot either wearing a long sleeve shirt like this uh, in, the, in the hot summer days. Uh, keeps the keeps the sun off your arms, and it's nice and breathable, and it dries like nothing. Like your back's all sweaty, you take a 10 minute break, uh, your back's completely dry. It's amazing, amazing shirt, and this is kind of what I'll be wearing when it gets uh, like when it's really hot and sunny through like the long stretches of just out in the sun, um, out in the beginning anyway especially because of all the snow and stuff so and when it gets really cold as well um, now but usually I'll be wearing these shorts just a pair of campus screw yeah small just very light uh, breathable shorts uh, and then here I have a, a Rocky or sorry a Reebok shirt just a nice sports shirt, nice and breathable as well. And this is probably what I'll be carrying or wearing the most uh, on your day to day, just through those warm, warm days. Um, probably wear that the most. And then I can wear this shirt under this shirt and the shorts under the pants too if it gets really cold. Next, I'm going to jump over into my. My boxer briefs, I'm bringing three pairs of boxer briefs. These are Exficio, uh, Exficio boxer, 
Exficio Give and Go Boxer Briefs. Yeah, and they are really, really comfortable. A little bit pricey, but my goodness, are they ever worth it? I got two pair of those and one pair of just polyester um, and spandex pair from Mountain Coat and Co-op as well. Really comfortable. I wore these on the on the CT and the JMT, and they were extremely comfortable. But these two are even more comfortable and very breathable, uh, odor resistant, just you name it. Wonderful, wonderful material uh, this underwear made of. So. Next are the uh, Darn Tough socks. I have two pair of just ankle socks, Darn Tough ankle socks, and then a third pair that are slightly taller, slightly taller pair. And can't say enough good things about Darn Tough either. I love their I love love their socks, and I've sent three pairs back already. Uh, wore them out on my training hikes. Uh, in 2014, and then the CT and JMT, and um, like a year of construction work, and oh my goodness, just really, really, uh, really durable. So I send them back, and they send me three new pair, lifetime warranty. Uh, and take advantage of it too. If you guys have, you know, your your darn tough socks are are damaged or whatever from just so much use, because eventually they will wear out. Yeah, they're incredible socks, but eventually they will wear out and. So you definitely take advantage of the uh, the warranty. So next is my uh, sleeping clothes. Now I know a lot of you guys probably aren't bringing sleeping clothes, but me uh, at the end of the day, I like to wipe myself down with my pack towel. Just wipe myself down quite a bit, and my legs, my arms, uh, my face, my crotch, and just get all the the sweat, the salt, uh, the bug spray, the suntan lotion, whatever you might have on you, just wipe it all down, get into some comfortable cotton clothes and get in your sleeping bag. Oh my goodness, so it's just a world of a difference. And I can't sleep well at all when I'm dirty and sticky and my legs are sticking together. And uh, I don't like to get into my sleeping bag like that either. Um, I don't have a sleeping bag liner and I just I will not get into my sleeping bag when I'm when I'm that dirty. So uh, anyway, this is my my cotton shirt, and it just feels so good after an entire day of uh, hiking in your synthetic clothing uh, to jump in a, a cotton shirt as well. Especially after you wipe yourself down, uh, I feel like a new man, ready for bed. So anyway, this is my cotton shirt. Uh, bought this one because it's Canada's 150th birthday this year, and figured this. Uh, this shirt would suit it pretty well. Love that shirt. And these are just some really thin uh, fleece pants. Uh, just, yeah, thin pants, but really, really soft and comfortable. And let me throw those on too in the, in the really cold nights. Or on the, the cool nights where it's just a little too much for my sleeping bag. So I'll throw my, I'll throw on my cotton shirt, my my, uh, my fleece bottoms and just lay on my sleeping pad itself without the sleeping bag uh, in like one of those warm nights. So, anyway, this is my pack towel. Wipe myself down. Wipe my tent down when it's uh, all wet in the inside. Say I had to pack it up or put it up in the rain. Uh, I can wipe it all down. And this these camp towels they hold ten ten times their weight in, in water. They're super absorbent and really really awesome if you uh, if you just wash yourself in the river you got a towel to wipe yourself off or dry yourself off and in town if you shower and you don't have a towel uh, say at a hostel or someone's house or something um, again you have, you have an awesome towel to uh, dry your entire body with uh, next I'll be going into my my sun hat that's uh, the outdoor research sun hat uh, I love this hat, I wear it all the time, and yeah, it went on me, or went with me on the, uh, the CT and the JMT, and I love it. Definitely coming with me this year again. It saves my ears and my nose. So, 
And this is just a pair of sunglasses. Uh, I think I bought these at Mountain Equipment Co-op too. And yeah, they're just generic cheap sunglasses, 20 bucks or something like that. Don't go buy, don't go break in the bank on a pair of sunglasses. I found two pair on the Colorado Trail last time, uh, just from other people losing them. I didn't lose mine. Uh, I'm surprised that I didn't. But <clears throat> people lose them all the time, they break. And so don't take your nice sunglasses out there, unless they're prescription or you need to or something like that. But yeah, if you just, uh, just get some cheap ones. It'll, it'll do. Uh, next to my, just a toque, a hat, um, cap, whatever, whatever you say here in Canada, we say toques. So we, uh, this is my toque, a little micro fleece on the inside. Um, yeah, really nice little toque. And inside here is my Mont Bell down jacket. One of my favorite pieces of gear. Really, really do love this thing. And I wouldn't trade this for the world. Uh, it's got one little hole in it. Patched it like two years ago and still going strong. It's got the little hoodie on it. And it stays, the hoodie stays right nice and tight to your head. So when you're moving, it moves with you. And that's very important sometimes. I wear this thing all the time, all winter. I'll just throw a long sleeve shirt on, throw my down jacket on, walk out the door, and good to go. So that's basically all my clothes. Now, like I said, that's probably quite a bit of a uh, little bit of extra clothing, especially because I have my down jacket too. Um, if I need to get warm, I can definitely get warm with this thing. And I really do like my sleeping clothes. I like to have a pair of sleeping clothes. Now, I know a lot of you guys probably won't, but yeah, nonetheless, uh, it's something that really works for me. And I have no problem carrying it either. So, so next I'm going to jump into my, my rain gear. This is my Patagonia rain jacket. Waterproof rain jacket, it's nice and light, nothing special. I do believe it's the Patagonia Storm. No, I'm, I'm, I won't, I'm not certain on that, but H two N O. I don't know. Really, really good jacket. Love it. I just recently bought it too, a couple months ago, and I wore it a couple times. Uh, took it out on a canoe trip. Uh, worked really well. Snowed and rained. Uh, for four days and stay dry with that thing. So, and my rain pants as well. These are the same rain pants that I wore in 2014, and they're just simple Mountain Equipment Co-op co uh, basic rain pants, really. And they pack down uh, quite small too. And nothing special. No pockets. No nothing on them. And they're quite a, like a slim profile too. So when you're walking. They're not rubbing up against each other so much and creating so much noise. I really hate that. Uh, so awesome, awesome pair of uh, rain pants. And then this is just my rain cover, my Osprey 70 liter rain cover. And yeah, that's it. This is my rain gear. So next to my shoes and my camp shoes or river crossing shoes or whatever. And uh, so these are the La Sportiva Wildcats, and it's very popular, very popular pair of shoes for the trail. Really do like these myself. Uh, very comfortable, good grip on them, and I love the support on the uh, it gives you on the back of the foot. Uh, really, really good, good support. So I can't uh, can't wait to actually do some big miles in these. I probably only put about 120 miles on these so far and just for training hikes, uh, walking up and down the, the local ski hills um, with my pack, just getting my legs better in shape and stuff like that, so yeah, I really like these. And uh, if, I, if they treat me well in the, in the first like four or five hundred miles, uh, I'll just simply buy more of those pair. If not, then I'll try something else. So. These are just some Crocs. I wore these too in, the, uh, in 2014. And the uh, the strap for the this one came off. I'm not sure how or what happened, but yeah, it tore off of there. But I'm still gonna use it just like this. Uh, I might make myself something on there, some makeshift uh, homemade something. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. And next is my.
wood barrel that I'll be carrying in, uh, in the area that is needed, close to Yosemite there. And this is my 20 liter food bag. Uh, this is about six or seven days worth of food in here. And yeah, I really, really like this bag. And this is, I, yeah, like I said, I cook quite a bit out on the trail. And I have a lot of snacks, like good snacks. Yeah, great food in here. My, I don't hold back uh, with the with the food. This alone for six days is probably I don't know, 21 pounds probably. <laughs> so yeah, definitely, definitely do eat a lot. So. Uh, all right. Well, that's my gear video. Uh, it's my first gear video I've ever made. I'm sure it's gonna be unfortunately quite long. Uh, I elaborate on all my stuff here, but I, what I'd quickly like to do though uh, is show you guys my what I've saved my weight on because, like I said earlier, I've saved about 21 pounds off of my base weight. Uh, yeah, my base weight, and so and, and a lot of it, um, a lot of a lot of the weight that I have saved, it's simply because I'm not carrying stuff. Like I had so much stuff in the top little pouch of my backpack. So much miscellaneous crap in there, extra batteries, this little GPS that I only used like once or twice. Uh, oh my goodness, just <laughs> probably five or six pounds of crap, right? Like I just didn't need it. And my first aid kit was huge. Uh, it must have been close to a pound, just the first aid kit. So yeah, I've learned a lot. I'm a stubborn learner. Uh, it takes me a while to really, uh, even if someone's told me 10 times, I have to try it myself. <laughs> So, anyway, uh, this is some of the gear that I've saved my, a lot of weight on. So first is my, my camera. Uh, this one is the DSC HX300, 50 uh, times optical zoom. I really like this camera. Uh, it did wonder for me in, two, for me in 2014. Um, but the stabilization system went on it. I couldn't really use the zoom anymore because it was so shaky. And I, I don't use this thing at all anymore. And plus it fell into a, a campfire and melted the, uh, the exterior of the lens and on top and the handle here quite a bit and the, the trigger button there. So anyway, um, this thing is significantly bigger than my A6000 and quite a bit heavier too. So I've dropped quite a bit of weight on a better and smaller camera. This is the filter that I brought in 2014 that, I, that I'm replacing the uh, Sawyer, the Sawyer original with. So it's literally this whole thing here replaces this. And this is the Catadyne Vario. Really good pump. Absolutely love it. Uh, it, has a, it has a carbon filter and a ceramic filter. So no matter what, your water always. Uh, it got filtered proper and it tastes good too. Uh, it didn't leave a bad taste though. So, and these are the two hoses, the in and out hoses that it came with. In a small little bag. And yeah, big old pump. Uh, I don't know, probably two pounds of savings, honestly. And so, and then this is my pillow. This is my air pillow. I bought this just to see how I'd, how I'd like it because I wanted, this, uh, wanted a pillow that pack down smaller and this one definitely does it's a really small little pillow and it's an air pillow but it's just not as comfortable as my other one and comfort is such a big thing for me I yeah and so that's why I'm not, uh, not wearing that this is my this is the Goal Zero Nomad 7 and uh, guide 10 plus this thing here and this thing here weighs as much well it weighs more than this this whole thing here and this thing is a 21 watt and I think that's only a 7 watt and plus the battery pack now I have the battery like I have my big 20,000 milliamp battery pack too for this but even this and this together it might be like <laughs> close to the same weight. Uh, I don't know the weight, I, I do have a scale here, but I, I'm, not, I'm not too keen on it or whatever, worried about it. So, um, 
Yeah, I love my new setup though with this. A uh, lot more power. Yeah, a lot more power from the sun and a lot more storage as well. So, so next is the sleeping pad here. This is the Xbed Down Mat 9. And it's a negative 38 degree pad. It's a big, heavy pad. Well, it's not very big. It's no more, it's not bigger than my other one, but it's a little bit thicker and significantly more comfortable. Uh, this has down in it, and I carried this one for over yeah, close to a thousand miles in 2014. And I still love this pad or pad, absolutely love it. But yeah, it's it's like three pounds or something like that. It's just ridiculous. Uh, whereas my other one is probably one pound or close to it. So big savings on there. Um, my water bladder as well, um, saving quite a bit of weight from um, leaving this one with all the plastic and stuff like that. The other one is just a flimsy, flimsy, uh, flimsy material, and doesn't have this plastic and this back frame and everything. And I'm not sure how much weight savings that was, but it's definitely enough to change that up on with. My biggest, my biggest one, my biggest weight savings is my tent. Um, went from this is the Hilleberg now two, uh, which is close to six to seven pounds. And I really, really do love this tent. It's absolutely bomb proof, very comfortable, um, very comfortable to be in for like a whole day if you're stuck in it because of a storm or something. And <clears throat> absolutely bomb proof. Uh, it can be incredibly windy out and you're very comfortable inside your tent. So, uh, but like I said, yeah, it's about six or seven pounds. And my new tent, uh, the Fly Creek 2, is. Yeah, maybe two pounds, two pounds and a couple ounces. So, yeah, that was a big, big weight savings on that one. And like, look how big this thing is too, compared to compared to this one, right? Like, it's just a ridiculous amount of weight savings. And when you're holding it too, it's, <laughs> it's crazy. So, anyway, uh, so that's all my gear. That's everything that I'll be taking out on my. Pacific Crest Trail trip, and uh, at first I wanted to make my uh, videos out there while I'm out there. I want to take a little Microsoft Pro 4 out, uh, edit while I'm out there, but I won't be doing that now. I just, I just don't have enough. I just won't have enough time. And I, even if I did, I don't think I'd really like to do that out there. Spend the time to do that. Um, kind of just, yeah, relax at the end of the day and not have to worry about editing a video yet. So. As much video as I will make, which is going to be a lot, uh, I'll be editing everything as soon as I come back from my trip uh, in November or something like that. So, uh, for anyone who is interested in watching that entire series, it's going to be a big series, uh, kind of what I did on the John Muir Trail video last time. A uh, big series of videos doing the entire Pacific Crest Trail. So, if you are interested, please subscribe. Um, but until I start releasing these videos, uh, just hook me up on uh, on Facebook, on Instagram, and Snapchat as well. Uh, that'd be awesome. I'm gonna leave the link below on all three of my accounts, or all three of my social media uh, things there down in the description. And I'll be releasing hopefully something every day, maybe a couple times a week, maybe once a week. I I don't know, uh, but uh, please follow me on that until I get back and. Uh, start editing these videos which will be awesome I cannot wait and when I do start to release these videos it'll probably be one every day or one every other day that I'll be releasing them too so you can kinda uh, follow me as I go uh, kind of thing so uh, anyway that's it I'm gonna stop rambling on here it's already a ridiculously long video probably and I'm really sorry about that but and again I am not a lightweight backpacker um, I know exactly what I have, how much it weighs, and I have no problem carrying it either. I've already lost 21 pounds since the last time I did a big backpacking trip, and which I'm really happy with. Um, my 32 pound base weight here is is incredible. I really, really like it, and so <clears throat> uh, yeah. Maybe, maybe my next trip will be uh, lighter, maybe a different backpack and a different sleeping bag and a couple other things on I, I could weight, uh, lose some weight on too obviously but 
uh, yeah, that'll be in the future, obviously, though. But for now, this is my setup. And if you have any questions, uh, please comment below. I will try to get back to you until I head out onto the trip, which is uh, July 8th. Uh, and July 9th or 10th, I'll be starting the trail. So I'm extremely <laughs> excited for it. I've been waiting for about a year and a half for this. So less than two weeks away. All right. Thanks for watching and see you guys out there.